I don't want him in. Something just touched my face. A dark labyrinth of haunted tunnels deep beneath the ground, 24 hours in the Edinburgh vaults. Did you hear it? Haunted. Beneath my feet lay a set of vaults that have never fully been investigated. <laughs> With dark phantoms, strange voices and ghostly apparitions, we just had to bring you to the Edinburgh vaults. In 1785, a bridge was built supported by 19 huge stone arches. The foundations were divided into a set of vaults, each on either end of the bridge. They were used to house immigrants and their families from the highlands. Tradesmen lived in these squalid conditions and conducted their businesses down below. Shops and taverns thrived in this strange subterranean world. It wasn't until 1980 that the set of vaults were discovered, and it soon came to light that these poor people had lived in the most appalling conditions. As with any town, tragedies and murder occurred, and in these vaults, the most horrific crimes were committed. Along with the workshops and warehousing, of course, that was down here, people started to live. And a whole community, if you like, of, of, of Edinburgh's low life existed down under the ground here, sometimes living and dying down below here without ever actually going up to the street level. And we're talking of thieves, pimps, prostitutes and burglars, all living down below in this subterranean city under the ground. The vaults that we're in at the moment are on one side of the, the South Bridge, uh, just off a street called Nidri Street South. And these were all closed up in about 1815, 1820. Uh, because of the water coming through, you'll see there's quite a lot of damp and there's stalactites and such like uh, up above. And this set of vaults have had some fairly extreme experiences, not as many as the other side, but the ones that have been experienced here have been more violent, I think, or more extreme. This main corridor entrance has seen some strange sightings. Dark shapes and ghostly mists have all been experienced here, along with the feelings of being watched. We've had figures being seen, we've had people feeling somebody breathing on their necks, we've had voices whispering in, in, in people's ears, we've had customers having their clothes tugged, we've had all sorts of things, the whole range of paranormal experiences, it would seem. There's quite a few famous people connected with these vaults, like Burke and Hare, the famous body snatchers. In the 18th century, bodies were at a premium. Doctors would pay anything up to 12 guineas for a freshly delivered body for the purpose of dissection. These men, Burke and Hare, used to steal bodies and also murder people. And they preyed on the prostitutes, the low life that lived down here. Most of the cells used to house families, but this particular cell is home to a dark figure that sits in the corner and watches visitors. In, in 1742, a, a surgeon that was notorious for receiving bodies lived very close to these vaults. His house was raided by the mob and they actually found a fresh body lying in his cellar waiting to be dissected. He was also arrested, but being a prominent surgeon in the town, actually got off with his life. This dark figure that's been seen frequenting these vaults on many occasions, we haven't got a name for him yet. Who knows, he could well be one of those unfortunate people that was smothered, taken away, and dissected. 
People have felt an icy cold hand on their face whilst walking down this corridor. It said it could be the ghost of a woman that was murdered here. Is she just looking for a friend? With there being a, an entire community living under the ground, there would obviously be ale houses, taverns, pubs, brothels. And in 1822, in a tavern that was situated under the ground here, the landlady, Mary McKinnon, was trying to expel some ruffians that had been rather unruly in the place. And she came out brandishing a huge kitchen knife and started prodding people. Everyone ran, but unfortunately, one of them tripped over and fell onto a knife. And she stabbed this poor man to death. He wasn't a ruffian. In fact, he was um, a city clerk. She was tried and sentenced and hanged for murder on April the 16th, 1822. I feel, what sort of things have been felt here and seen here? Well, there's numerous um, occurrences all over the, the location. Um, strange figures have been seen, unidentifiable mists, um, noises. That's one of the main things you hear, footsteps. Apart from footsteps, what else are heard? Well, apparently there's been a voice heard saying, get out, um, and that's heard on quite a regular basis. Um, a few people have actually left the building because of that. Earlier on, when we were setting up um, to have our, our chat, we had very high readings, didn't mm. we? That was strange. We used the EMF meter just before we started this interview, and it was going off the scale. But apparently this archway is solid stone. There is no cabling, electricity supply, running through this, this part of the, the location. So I can't really understand why we were getting that reading. Holy crap. The reading for anything between two and eight, they reckon, could be significant of paranormal activity. It's all round here. Phil, Phil. Five, six, yeah. This is all five along here, all along here. And it, go, it keeps going and it drops to two the further you go back in that one. So there, that, there must be some power cables or something running through the, through the structure. I wonder if it's just the power cables just emitting stuff yeah. down. The other places that we've been, We've never had any readings like this to do with power cables. No, because we've been in places where we've had power exactly. cables before. Yeah, which is why I'm a bit confused as to why these seem to be so strong down here. What we should do is ask Fran if mm. they've ever had such powerful uh, readings down here. All there is is the electrolyte system that you can see in here. There's no other electricity. There's, in there's a road directly above you. That's pavement. That's the road. There isn't any. There isn't anything else. It could, it could be you know, street lighting. What the team seems to be experiencing here are a number of very high and very unusual EMF recordings. Now there could be a number of possible sources of those kinds of unusual frequencies. For example, there could be a utility cable going overhead because they're not actually that far beneath the street, um, and it's always very difficult to actually identify the source of those kinds of frequencies. But what we do know is that when people are exposed to these kinds of unusual frequencies, then sometimes, for some people, they can actually experience unusual sensations as though they're experiencing the presence of perhaps a ghost. In this kind of setting, they might interpret it as being a ghost. Also, sometimes people will feel as though they see something out of the corner of their eye, only to turn to look at what's there and find it disappears. Now again, in the location in which you're told is haunted, you'll interpret that as being the figure of, of, of somebody who's passed away, and maybe the person who actually haunts that area. But it could simply be a result of being exposed to these unusual frequencies. The set of vaults where we are now in Nidri Street South have not been investigated before. We think there are strange things that go on. We have an inkling that there are uh, experiences to be had, but we've never had a full-scale overnight investigation in this set of vaults, so very excited about it. I've got lots of names of rather famous people and some events that actually took place concerned with these very vaults that I'm hoping may well come up later. Whenever our medium, Derek Akora, arrives at a supposed haunted location, things seem to happen. We were all excited and eager to begin our investigation with Derek in the South Nidri Street Vault. As we've now entered this section here, 
um, into this room. And I say, just use the word room for the moment. I get this like um, shouting and uh, uh, boisterousness um, and the, the fragrance, without a doubt, of ale and, you know, ooh, really, really strong and people sitting round and, and, you know, just being absolutely, some people falling over and what have you. And I'm getting as if there's a pitched feeling of anger that's been displayed in this area. And I'm getting this, like, now at the moment, this woman whose atmosphere and energy seems to be up and down here. And she seems to be uh, quite a strong, steady woman, steady of mind as well. I, I'm, I like as if I'm seeing people sitting and they're being served ale. Right. It's like, um, I suppose, um, uh, an inn or something where mm -hmm. ale was being served. Mm -hmm. And she was a real strong, she was the runner of this place. She was so strong that she would have got hold of physically a man. Okay, and you know, she'd have no uh, problems with, you know, evicting, okay? Getting rid of. Well, what you're actually saying is, is correct. There was, and um, I think Richard and Phil can back me up mm -hmm. here, there was actually a tavern here. Okay, did she, kill, the, she yeah. killed him? She killed him? I don't know. I feel as if anger, as if maybe being stabbed or something here. Can you give me a name for this woman? Not at the moment, mm -hmm. because I'm just picking up the residual. There's also, around that same time, um, I feel there was a, a, a small boy, a small boy. Um, I'm not saying he'd lost his life, but there was a lot of anger pitched towards this young boy. He was around this female landlady, or what have you, a lot. Um, and I feel that the fight, the fight that broke out, okay, had something over the young boy. He was hit, and she saw this, oh. and she just went absolutely crazy, and. You know, um, she definitely, she definitely took his life. Is she in visitation or is she grounded here? I feel that she walks the, these passages. Mm. She walks these passages. Do you want to go anywhere else here? Yes. Um, um, you see, it's not just this woman that comes up and down these passageways. Um, There's a man's energy also uh, comes along these passageways here. Is vented anger, and I use that word very, or words very carefully, vented anger, um, I would say he's quite cowardly, even though he's of spirit now. He's quite cowardly in the sense that he'd come up and down here. I feel he would have had very, very strong links with that fracas, what happened, you know, with the death right. of this man. <clears throat> He was, another, he was one of the nasty ones mm -hmm. who didn't lose his life, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but he was a party by, to he it. He was party to it. Right. And he, he's, he's nasty and he's obscene. But there's something that's been blocked up. Oh, I know where it is now as I go. The energy's taking me this way. Right. So you go along mm -hmm. this way. Now there's also, in this area here, um, would have a. The only way I can put it, or the energy states that people were. The only way I can put it at the moment is that people were not very nice in a group that used to be here. Now, I can't say whether this was a family or whether it was just a group of like minded people, but I feel there were um, some form of practices, okay? at some time here, and it's connected, would you believe it, with downstairs, or the stairwell. Mm -hmm. So if we can walk again, mm -hmm. I might be able then to connect the two energies yeah. together, okay? Yeah. Yeah. It's the energies pulling us down to this level now at the mm -hmm. moment. Yes, this is it. This is the connection. It takes me back in the energy, and it's as if I've got like one floor, two floors, it's like, two leading up to three floors. And there's a connection with that room back there. What is it? Do you know how I can describe it? It's like, you know when we talk about workhouses? Mm -hmm. And what have you, and I've got a mixture of females, I've got the mixture of even children around here. Um, 
and a lot of heartache, a lot of um, cruelty, a lot of cruelty, a lot of cruelty. Who's, who's behind us? Nobody. I just heard. Did you say something yeah. there? Kind of shuffle or yeah. somebody moving about back yeah. here. There are there are individuals, there are souls here that are I know are listening in, um, but they're not or haven't as yet started to um, want to show us any activity. I'm sure that that will come later, Ivy. Where's Phil? Phil, is there anything come up on the EMF at all? Because we had really high readings before. Mm. We, we had high readings earlier on, but there's none. Been picked up so far. It's completely flat, mm. completely dead. You see, well, because sometimes they're, they're going to, um, dependent on who we're dealing with in these individual spirits, um, their personality trait may be, hey, I'm not going to bother until I want to do it, mm. you know? And then all of a sudden, boom, wham, um, we'll get um, mm. more activity than what we probably bargain with. Since you've arrived. <laughs> <sighs> You always do this to me. <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> Already Derek had picked up on some of the tragedies that had occurred many years ago, and whatever ghostly presence was in the vaults with us had already started to make noises that were beginning to make the crew feel apprehensive. Definitely, definitely a, a group of souls at some time or other in there. That could be that... Um, could be also the energies. When I said, do you hear that? I heard that. Yeah. yeah that, that did Richard sound like Felix is down there, though, I believe. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, but Richard, Hello? did you just make that noise? I didn't make any noise. No, that, that sounded like it. That, yes. And could, could you hear no, a noise at all? No, that was not is traffic it, or anything. How do we know it's not somebody standing out there going? It could be because there's a pavement above you. Yeah. It did sound like it was a Did you hear it? Below. Ah, I thought it sounded like it was from next door. I thought okay, it was coming from that direction as well. That's why I looked up yeah. back towards Richard. It was more adjacent. Oh, yeah. oh God. OK, well, let's be pleased and glad of this, because maybe they are now going to, you know, start know. to show us. Oh, what is You're the matter with me? Be all right. It's pathetic. Things calm down. I know. Okay. I don't know why. Some all of a sudden, I've gone really jumpy. Think of all the other places we've been. All the other places we've been to, and this mm. one's completely freaking me out. Should we walk back up that way and see, or not, Derek? I'm more. Where are you wanting to go? More drawn to go, to go back way, yeah. down, yeah. yeah. Yes. What is up with me? I know it's annoying. No, it's just. It's I don't understand it. Did you hear that then? Did you hear? That was like a whisper. I was whisper. I didn't hear Did you hear it? Did you hear it? I didn't hear that. Like that. Yeah! But it, it was quite close. I thought, God, it was just on the stairs here. On the stairs? Mm -hmm. Yeah! You seem well, we're concentrating and we go to walk away again and we'll get something else. Close this way. Over here. Oh, yeah. Right here. Happening here. In that corner. I get two energies that huddle into this corner here. Two of them. Um, and I can't make out yet whether these are. Um, Elders, males, or whether they're children. But the energy level draws me to this corner here. And at times, activity is like known to be here, without a doubt. It's the residual left from that energy that is still so strong. And whilst I'm standing here, again, what's just happened, sometimes these sorts of things happen with me. I, I feel as if, all here to my jawline, chin, underneath my nose, is if I'm very heavy laden with um, facial hair. 
um, and dark facial hair. Dark. So I'm talking about a person um, who would have had beard, moustache, um, and very, very, very um, what was that? pointed Can features. Now, do you hear that? Please, God. That, that was like a, a, a child. No, 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 no. That no, was a child's voice. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, I heard a... <sighs> I heard a gargle. Yeah, I, heard, I definitely heard something. I'm not sure what it was. It sounded like a, a voice, but it could have been somebody's stomach rumbling. Okay. I heard something. It sounded like a gargle. Kids cry, mm. little kids sort of mm. gargle. Did you hear that then? Oh, yeah, I, I heard, heard that. that. Boom. There's something seriously going on over there. So I'm just going to check if it's Stuart. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, Richard, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll come with you. Someone or something was making banging noises above us. We knew Stuart, our rigger, was upstairs. Richard Felix went upstairs to find out if Stuart was responsible for making the loud bangs. Stuart is up here. Well, I'll ask what he's been doing. Were, were you moving stuff around a few moments ago, Stuart? Like heavy stuff? No, I heard it. I heard it. It's as if there's a furniture remover up here. All I've been doing is this cable along. But I could hear something earlier, literally, yeah. when Carl went downstairs with the camera. I came up, I could hear something like furniture, like you described, yeah. moving on that side. And it's, it's not traffic noise, it's no, as if someone was moving a wardrobe or something. Bang, 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 Stuart is upstairs, yeah. okay. but Stuart is moving nothing. All that Stuart's got with him is a cable. Okay. And he's just winding out the cable. And he heard the same noise that we did down here, upstairs to the left of where he was. And he said it was like furniture removals. Okay. And he's yeah. up there on his own. Yeah. Still. Okay. Right. Okay. So the, the, it is um, very hopeful um, for what maybe they're going to try and display a little bit later on. Um, the more the merrier for us, isn't it? Yeah. I'm really excited, I'm excited about it. Are you, Dion? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm very hopeful. Yeah. yeah. I was already terrified and was not looking forward to what we might experience later. With all the lights out and only our night vision cameras to light the way, the tension mounted and nerves were beginning to fray as we began our night vision investigation at South Nidri Street Vaults. I, I feel that the activity now, maybe they are going to display um, something that's going to be um, hopefully uh, quite dramatic um, because just in the atmosphere here in this ether, there seems to be to me anyway, seems to be like a, um, uh, ready to just like unleash something on us. Oh God. But not in such a bad, when I say unleash, mm. I mean unleash something that's gonna be quite dramatic. Maybe not just in this area, as we're walking through the passageways. I've got shivers all up the back, oh my back mm. again, it's. Mm. Is somebody yeah. having a laugh? Now there's three large bangs. That was what I heard earlier on. Jeez. Three large bangs, and they were on like slabs, weren't they? Boom, boom, boom. Maybe if we just stay quiet a little while. That was distinctly three loud bangs, wasn't it? Yeah. There's so much other physical noise in here. It could easily have been a noise from up on the street yet going through. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I've got to disagree. That was like three large bangs as if someone had like got a boulder or a big rock. Yes. Like here and gone boom. That's something like boom. slaps. Yeah. yeah. No, I, no, I agree. <clears throat> I agree with Craig, basically. <gasps> yeah. You can hear the traffic clearly through there. What's that? But you did you hear that um, bang then? Like again, like on solid stone. No, 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 there's a load of there's a load of rubble here, isn't there? Everywhere. Duck. Boom, oh, boom. Shh. It is. It's like rock form, something being mm. shifted. Our crew was still quite rational, but how long would that last? We had a surprise in store for them, and it wasn't a pleasant one. Another set of vaults was waiting for us to investigate. Many ghost sightings had been seen here and had become famous for its terrifying atmosphere. 
It would be a first for Most Haunted, as we would all be entering virgin territory in complete darkness. With Derek and our night vision cameras, we made our way over to the other side of the bridge and into the Blair Street vaults. You get a very different sense when you're in the different sets of vaults. When you're here in Nidra Street South, you know you're underneath the bridge because you can actually hear the traffic going over your head. You're not that far away from the real world out there. When you go into the Blair Street vaults, you go three levels below street level and you can't hear anything down there at all. So it's a very, very different kind of atmosphere from one side to the other. In the Blair Street vaults, there is a particularly nasty soul known as Mr. Boots, seen wearing thigh-length boots, known as butcher boots, often worn by soldiers. But of course he could be a cobbler, or of course he could be a security guard. But he's been seen pushing people, standing, glaring at people, and actually recorded shouting, telling people to get out of his vaults. I wouldn't spend the night in the vaults, no. In fact, in Blair Street, I won't even go down there by myself to light the candles. Um, now, I am very aware, although he's not shown himself, I am very, very aware of a man who comes right way through these passageways. And I want to describe him to you because I've got that mentally. I've got this grey, white-haired, quite long-haired man whose face is so tight with unease that his unpleasant atmosphere is listening to us right now. He wouldn't be at all pleased for anyone to be around, never mind, you know, us together collectively. He's not happy. There's a little boy also little boy whose energies are coming through that aperture. Yes, that aperture. A moment ago, when all I saw was his face. Are you okay? Oh my God! Oh, God! Something just, something, something just touched both my arms, oh. like from behind, like this, like kind of, like yeah. that. Maybe the energies of um, this child oh. Um, we we'll probably do that to try and draw attention oh to you. God. And it's here that in this energy, the little boy runs from this old one because I feel that the little boy lost his life because. Oh. 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 Jesus Christ, Tom. His energies. So I get this feeling of the boy running from room to room, looking <laughs> away in memory of this old. Ooh, a horrible sort of attitude of a man. I'm also I'm very aware as well of men. I get a group of them, four or five of them. People who are hooded. The only way I can describe it, like monks. But there's two of them that are absolutely crazy. Two of them who did despicable things down here. What's oh, God! What's oh. Can we just go into the energy of it? Yeah, yeah. Because I feel it, it wants us to come through here. Something grabbed my arms. Something mm -hmm. did grab my arms. Two of them come scurrying through, and they're looking for people, and it's two of them. And it's as if they're laughing, and they're just picking people up. They're picking them up, and just wrapping them up, like this. I'm just pulling them like and just pulling them up as if they're just like pieces of meat and taking them out. Taking them out of here and laughing and counting and counting, counting the numbers, what they're gonna get, what they're gonna get. What were they doing, Sam? What were they doing? They were dragging them through. They were dragging them through these animals. They were they were dragging them through to take them. Where were they taking them? They were taking them to the doctor. What doctor? more, and they're not even dead, and they killed them. They actually killed them to make sure they were dead, and took them away. Oh, the stench and the slaughter. What's that, Sam? What's that sound? There's someone screaming out here. He shouted down these tunnels. He's telling anyone and everyone not to come here, to get out of here, 
otherwise you'll do them harm. I've got to take it though. The only way I can describe it is people must have lived here, stayed down here, in a form of like subterranean type living quarters. But there was evil um, that seemed to be in control down here. And it's still very evident now. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of water dripping, isn't it? Yeah. Carl, our director, had heard a strange noise coming from the next room. The rest of us went to join him. The only thing I can describe it as, like a, like a, a boulder being pushed. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was a definite... A definite sort of dragging, dragging, pushing noise. Now, that, I don't think that that's down to um, those covered up monk figure type. This is this old, old man whose um, nastiness uh, prevailed down here. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. I feel very sick. Me and Craig do as well. I, yeah. I feel like that. Is she okay? What? 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 what, what? So Derek had picked up on two characters that murdered people for doctors to experiment on their bodies. Burke and Hare, the infamous body snatchers, did murder, mutilate, and snatch bodies from the vaults. It seemed likely that these were the people that Derek was talking about. I had definitely felt my arms being pulled and we did hear thumps above us. This place was terrifying and I honestly couldn't wait for this investigation to be over. were becoming uncomfortable as certain members of the crew, including myself, were beginning to feel unwell. Derek was being very guarded and tried to reassure us as to why we were feeling sick. How are you feeling, Rick? Yeah. I feel really sick. You feel sick as well? I feel really sick, like I'm going to vomit. Yeah, I was feeling like that. It's, to me, it stands to reason that all you guys, at some time or other, whilst we're down here, are going to feel um, these conditions of the residual energy plus their activities as they're going through, um, they're, you know, they're leaving it in this ether and it's going to hit you and it can come in many ways. What, what, what is this smell in here? This can be a, a mixture, a mixture of a lot, of a lot of things. This is a bad area. This needs to be absolutely not just cleansed but blessed and cleansed because the stench will stay forever. Can anybody else smell it? It'll do, yeah. Thanks, man. What does it smell like to you? It smells, uh, to me, it smells like plasticine, sort of smelly. I don't know. Yeah, it's not, um, yeah, yeah. It's not too um, far off in the veins. What's that? Like that, twice. What was it? Bang, bang. Up there, on that height, on that level. That's that white-haired, grey-haired man, and also he runs after the little boy, and he's got... His shoes are made for running. His shoes are made for running. The shoes here that belong to him. There are some shoes... Yeah, there are. There are some shoes upstairs that they found here from a little, little, little boy, or little tiny shoes. Leather. Come and show yourself, you, your old tyrant. You old beggar. Let's see how brave you are. Mm. I can hear him, I can hear him, I can hear him now. What's he saying? I can't understand him. What's that? He's screaming at us to get out in Gaelic. In Gaelic. Back. 
Anyone else just hear that? Yeah. yeah. His energy is above us. It was one, two, three. three. His energy is above us. footsteps. Yeah. Don't split up. Him in. It's too much for me now. I can't take that. I can't take it. I'm not letting him in. We've just. It's not nice. We've just been on there. Yeah. For the night. There's a noise came from further back there. Uh -huh. And we both heard. Will you tell me what you've heard? I said to you, is that voices? And I said, yeah, and it sounded like kids groan. I go, yeah. Uh, uh. <coughs> Just touched my face. Something just brushed my face. It was a hand. I'm yeah. sorry. Get in there. I was standing there, and it, a hand, and it was freezing cold, but you could feel the fingers in the palm. And it was like yeah. that. Oh my. Oh God. Come here, boys. Come here, lads. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Come here, come here. Come here. Right. There was two of them here, okay? Showing themselves. Two hooded um, men, okay? Right here together, standing side by side. Just here. Did you try this out for those voices? Because yeah. I heard them. Yes. It seemed like something was crossing it. Yeah. I'm moving about. There's no two ways about that. They are moving yeah. about here. Okay, did you touch my head? No, no. 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 Oh, Christ. How tall are you, Cole? Me. Well, you're not two. touching the head. You're not, no, you're not touching the roof. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. You didn't touch my head at all? No, it wasn't me. That's did you just flick my hip, though? Did somebody touch my hip? <laughs> in the past, when we've been to different locations, different sites, where certain members of the team, okay, yourself included, Carl, been scratched, okay? Yeah. These conditions will prevail with this, like, activity down here. Um, you know, it could be any part of the body. On our way out, we had to see if there was anyone on the upper floor that had been walking around. All that we found was an empty room that was under construction. We didn't hear any more footsteps, so whatever it was, had gone. During the early hours of the morning, the crew did split up into smaller groups, covering both vaults. A few of us did hear strange shuffling noises in Blair Street. Shuffling sound at all. Mm. 
Yeah, so did I back there. Apart from that, nothing paranormal was caught on camera, only fear. I mean, it'll take me about a minute to do a circuit at this place, two minutes. I know. And you got that, I mean, if, if anything happens, you'll catch it. I mean, if it happens anything around you, you'll catch it. I know. It's like I'm too scared to take a step forward. It, I, literally, I'm only going to be... Oh, I'm f ten seconds away from you. And vice versa. Yeah? If you get really, if you get really bad, shell me. And I'll do the same. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 24 hours underground was enough for the crew, and we all were pleased when we could leave. We had all experienced something, whether it was noises or being touched. Our evidence is mainly unexplained noises that mystified and unnerved us all. If you were to ask any member of the Most Haunted crew to go back to the vaults, every one of them would refuse. I think that speaks for itself. When I first came to the vaults, one of the major things I noticed was the fact that it was so spooky. Um, and that's just with the lights on. I expected to be more frightened than I was, um, and I wasn't. I found that the Edinburgh vaults have both been revealing with the residual energy and also a certain amount of negative activity. These vaults have never really been investigated um, like we've done it in the last 24 hours. I think there's a phenomenal amount of residual energy which Derek's picked up. And I think that's because of the amount of life and death that's gone on down here in the last 200 years. Um, the pain and, and fear and trepidation and just general living that's gone on here. But as regards actual spirits, I'm not so sure. Some of the noises that we heard uh, were very strange and uh, unaccounted for. Then things got, for me, slightly worse um, in the fact that I got even more nervous as we went across the road to the other set of vaults. Um, didn't like it one bit, to be honest. It was active, it is active, and it'll continue to be active. In my opinion, it was a very interesting, exhilarating experience just to come here and visit these incredible vaults underneath Edinburgh. Overall, fantastic investigation and one that was definitely worthwhile doing. Throughout the investigation, the team are reporting a number of unusual noises, bangings, shufflings, sometimes even they, they seem to report hearing voices. In the Nidri Street vaults, those vaults are actually not that far beneath the surface of uh, where the road would be. So some of the extraneous noises could actually be being caused by traffic going overhead or even people walking by in the street. Having said that, some of the knockings that are heard by the team don't sound as though they're coming from outside. Really? Meanwhile, in the Blair Street um, vaults, they're actually much, much deeper underground. So any of the noises being heard there are extremely unlikely to be sounds coming from the surface. So it could well be somebody causing a noise in one of the other, other locations with, underneath the ground. But the team do actually go and investigate that and seem to rule out that possibility. One other explanation which the team haven't really fully investigated is the possibility that somebody amongst the team is actually creating the noise, even though they're not aware of it, and the very unusual acoustics in the vaults are actually making it sound as though it's coming from some distance away. Are you OK? Oh, my God! What's that? What's that? Oh, Scott! Something just, something just touched both my arms. One of the events I actually find most impressive on this investigation um, is Yvette being touched. And, in fact, a number of the members of the team do report that they're actually being touched. Um, Yvette reports getting pulled back at some stage. And when we look at her reaction in, in minute detail, and when we look in slow motion, it does look as though she really is re responding to, some, to a real sensation. So a possible explanation could be that uh, simply kind of the heightened anxiety and expectation can lead that person to interpret any experiences they do have as being paranormal. But having said that, the experience that, that the vet seems to be having seems to go beyond just simply an unusual odd, odd, odd sensation. She really does feel as though she's getting pulled back. 
Well, what a night to remember. I was certainly very nervous and other members of our crew were as well. I don't think we'll ever forget our 24 hour stay in the Edinburgh vaults. So until the next time, sleep tight. Can we blow the candles out? It's gonna be better. Show yourself.